Good, wearing red, <laughs> bright colors all the time. I love bright colors. Oh, I do like purple colors. I think um, it brings out the brightness in you and it shows who you are. Yeah. Thank you, Rosaline. So tell me, what is this event today? What is this all about? Today we are um, we're celebrating Minister Shino Alege. He is one of the ministers at the Nigerian High Commission. He is a minister for consular education and welfare. Believe you me, um, from sincerely from my heart, Minister has done a lot in the community. When I say in the community, not just London alone, he extends to Scotland, to Glasgow, to within Europe. He is an amazing person. I call him my inspiration. Anytime I'm crying, I can call on him. And the way he will just advise you, I look up to him so, like he's, he's not my God, but I can put him next to God. Yes. How long has he been in the office? Um, he's been in London, I think about four years now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, when, when you say that he does a lot for the community, what does he do? Because they're saying a lot for the community. What Can you specify what a lot for the community? What does he do really? For example, when we did the movie Labo Life is a Journey, we wanted to invite the, the, the wife of the our commi um, High Commissioner to come and be the mother of the day, but she wasn't around. So he personally took the challenge upon himself and said, whatever you want to take Labo, I'm going to push you there. And then we wrote a letter to the Nigerian High Commissioner that we want to come and do a private screening in honor of the wife. And then, lo and behold, they replied my letter that, yes, you can come. That's just one of the things he has done. So we went to Nigerian High Commissioner, we, we, we did a private screening of Labo, and after the reception was overwhelming. And afterwards, the money they gave me, I couldn't believe it through him. <laughs> it, he has done a lot. That's just one or just the, the, a little of what he has done. So you, are you saying that he's in support of education, entertainment, arts, uh, culture? He's in support of anything good. Mm, that's all I can say. Thank you very much, Rosaline. Thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sir, thank you very much for taking your time to talk to us, Greenwich TV. Thank you very much, sir. So tell us more about who you are. Well, to the glory of God, my name still remains Shino Alige. I'm the, one of the outgoing diplomats of Nigeria, from the UK back to Nigeria. I've been South here for almost four years in turn. So did you just come from Nigeria to London, or you are a diplomat somewhere else? The, the straight answer is that I came all the way from Nigeria, but before then, you know, diplomats are nomads. I've been privileged to serve in some other countries, like in the Scandinavia, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark, and even in Africa, South America, principally, among other places. So, so you're a minister of education, consular? and welfare That's right okay so what have you because i spoke to one of i spoke to one of your one of the people that really value your services in, in in london and she actually said that they really value you and whatever you do they really really admire your services and they're really sad actually that you're leaving so can you say why why do you have to leave anyway is it because your time is up or is because that's what the protocol is I think you have said it all. That's how the protocol is. All to the glory of God. The natural thing is either three or four years. Now I've finished my time here. I have to go home for higher appointments. All to the glory of God. I try to feel sad I'm leaving. But you know, such is life. There's always an end to any good beginning. Thank you. Is there anything that you've seen in the UK, the rules in the UK, example, human rights or how the, the election, how the election goes, is there anything that you've seen in the UK that you'll actually take it back and Im Im implement it in Africa? Naturally, as a social animal, I discovered there's a lot of things to gain in any environment you go at all, be it in Africa, be it in Asia, be it in Europe. But the specific advantage of coming to serve in a place like UK says it all that this is the criterion of learning for all. And I'm privileged to be here. All the things I've gained here, I believe that they will enrich my wealth of experience when I'm deciding some other things in life, in my life pursuit.
Thank you very much. I know they always say that in Africa there is corruption, right? And I know we, you've traveled in so many different countries. Would you actually say that in Africa there is corruption, especially when it comes to election? Because I know in this country there was just elections some few months ago. So how would you say, would you, would you, would you agree with them? Or would you say... Absolutely not. Because what we are talking about is in terms of relativity. So as a society develops, so the culture of perfection develops. So let's give Africa its chance. Remember that a good number of these countries are over 200 years, 1,000 years old. And of course, democracy is not a bus stop. It's a process. Let's thank God for where we are now in Africa. We are moving forward. Thank you very much. So where are you going next? Are you going back to Nigeria to serve there, or you're going to a different country? For now, I'm going to Nigeria to continue my service. Then after God, we decide where I'll go next. Last question. All the countries that you've gone to, which one do you prefer the most? It's a very tricky question, anyway, because all societies prov provide their own unique experiences of life. I don't want to rate anyone above the other, but I think I've enjoyed the uniqueness of all the places I've gone, and I've learned the uniqueness of the environment mm -hmm. that have brought me a whole of, of me here. Okay. Thank you very much. Do you think, would you say that you've reached a lot of Nigerians when you are here in your, in your four years' term? Would, in your four years' term, would you say that you've reached loads of Nigerians? Because I know there's so many Nigerians in this country. Would you say that your term here, you met, even if it's not half of them, but did you actually serve loads of Nigerians? Because sometimes when you go to places like High Commission or you go to high places, you find the same faces, the same people all the time. So would you say that you served the majority of common Nigerians? Let me, first of all, before I answer your question, let me appreciate my High Commissioner, His Excellency Dr. Dalatu Sadiq Savida, who has given me the unique opportunity of mixing with Nigerians. Not only that we have reserved them to the best of our capacity, we have moved the Nigerian Commission from just that building in Northern lands to every nook and trainings of the UK be it Birmingham, be it Manchester, be it Glasgow, we have moved Nigeria High Commission to the people. Oh, thank you very much, sir. I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you very much. And safe journey where you're going, and you continue with your good services. God bless you. I always phone in the morning, I say, oh, can I see you in the afternoon? And even when they have too many things on their table, they are all here for which I'm very grateful. He will always say, Baba, come. And they make me look old when they say, Baba. <laughs> but I think I'm old. So he is so nice, a gentleman, assiduous in his responsibilities. Even when he was sick, I was asking, I said, ah, is Mr. Lege in the office? I didn't know that he was sick. And somebody said, oh yeah, um, it's a way, it's a way. So when he finally came to the office, I said, Mr. Lege, uh, what has happened? He said, oh, I was a little under the weather. You know, when you were calling me, I was ill. I said, ah, you didn't tell me. Oh, I don't want to bother you. That is sort of person he is. Doesn't want to bother anybody, but want to make sure that you are as happy as he is. And in every circumstance, he has always made sure that he keeps his cool, he keeps his joy, so that he doesn't affect anybody, whatever is wrong in his uh, environment. So we are sending off somebody who is very special. Let me, let me tell you something, the, the, the name they call him, Professor. Is that not so? <laughs> his, colleague, his colleague is called him Professor. The reason being that he has always had something to say constructively about any issues. Uh, so when you see people around him, it's a question of give and take. They are gaining from him and I'm sure he's learning from them. So we will miss you a lot, uh, Mr. Alege. Uh, I'm sure you are going to higher steps. Amen. And I wish you continued success in anything that you lay your hands upon. You look like somebody who's going to be around for a very, very long time in your profession because some people make mistakes here and there, but it seems to me that you've, done, you've known your metal and there is no way in the present atmosphere where you will not find succor 
in anything you lay your hands upon. Continue the way you are doing. We appreciate you. And that's why all of these people are here. Most of the people here, they represent a number of organizations. We can't bring everybody here. But each of them have at least another 50 people behind them. And when they go back in their respective uh, uh, meetings, they will say to them, oh, we just sent off Mr. Alege. Uh, they use some words now in the Air Commission. Is it you use sent forth? It makes sense. We sent forth Mr. Alege. And they will say, oh, great, because most of them have the support of their organizations. I have Nido here. We have there the head of the house, uh, Mr. Babatude Loye, who is our, uh, you call him the, the, the one and only anchor that we all hang upon. We wish you success, you and your lovely wife. May you continue to go from strength to strength. May the roads ahead be smooth, nice and tidy for you too. And remember us in your ways and means. And we will continue to remember you in our prayers. And the colleagues you are going to leave behind, I'm sure we we'll talk nicely of you for a very long time to come. Uh, in the spirit of oneness, in the names of all these organizations here, Sabakare is on my left, who represent the Nigerian Association in the community. And of course, our leader, uh, Babatu Deloye. Nido Chia is here. Uh, Chika Okafo, the leader of the women diaspora, is here. Uh, and all the other important people I would not continue to mention in case it takes too long a time to mention their names. So we believe that uh, you will continue to remember that uh, we love you, keep us in your heart, and may all the good things of life continue to follow you in whatever you do. Amen. We will never forget. Thank you very much. Um, I will ask uh, the Nido Chair to have a word. Just two seconds. <laughs> two seconds. I'll, I'll keep very strictly to the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Lege, I must say that I, I haven't really worked within an official capacity because of the way NIDO operates. We've been more with trade. But the very first time that I met you, I think what struck me was your warmth. You know, um, you're very, you embrace people in your character, in the way you approach them. And that's why you draw so many people to you. So even though we've not worked in an official capacity, we've become friends because when we meet, we talk. And I see the same thing in your family. You know, your children, they're always very, you know, smiling. And, and um, I've met your wife tonight and it's been like we've known each other for years. So I think it's something in your family. You're a very warm family. And, you know, um, as you return to Nigeria, I can say that we will miss you. Many of us here will miss you. And um, but we're sure that we'll see you again. And as some people have predicted, maybe as you know, High Commissioner someday or the other in the UK. Um, but we wish you the very best, and we pray that the Lord will go with you, and it will make every path straight before you. Amen. And as you go, you'll go to greater heights in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, and we all love you from Nido. Thank you. Thank you. That was two seconds. <laughs> um, the next person that will be calling. Um, sir, before I okay, let me ask you to say one word. Just two seconds, sir. Chi. Chi. Petrol of Nan. Okay. Uh, that's, that's, that's the petrol of, of Nan. Nan, yeah. And the member of the Council of Feathers. That's my, that's my uh, president. Mama has put on as Council yeah. of Feathers. We um, okay. I met a lady. Not too long ago. In fact, Alege is the first welfare officer I've been to his center, mm. which speaks volume. Mm. Because Alege, you know, he came to his work with uh, enthusiasm, Passion. understanding, and the warmth 
the few times I met him, I was impressed. In fact, the first time I met him was in Liverpool. When he came to the, our centenary celebration. And since then, I've encountered Mr. Alege. And I found in him the right stuff. These are the people who should be running Nigerian High Commission. These are himself and the, 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 the present High Commission. They represent what is good, what is progressive, what should be. Because Nigerians are even the, the worst enemy of the, 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 their own people. I could remember in the past, I don't go to Nigerian house. I've said it many times. Because it was a hopeless place until Dr. Kalade came. Then I start warming to the place. But this present High Commission has made it a paradise for all of us. We should all be grateful. And, and you, sir, are one of the pillars. I commend you. I feel that where you're going, there's no, you must progress. Because Nigeria needs people like you for us to change and become something. Nigeria should be great. Should be. But we are managed with the wrong people. And when we get people like you occasionally, we are delighted. I'm so happy to have met you. May everything go well with you. Thank you. Um, the next person I'm going to be calling up is uh, Mr. Sa. Sa. Martin Baker. Martin, the NANS president. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, all protocols observed. I don't even know how to describe Mr. Minister Alege as I call him. And uh, you give me two minutes or so, please. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, because of the, I've got to explain just one thing. No, no, no. no, no I don't want to. It's not politics tonight. It's reality. Mr. Lege is a gem as a human being and as a man. I have been the president of this organization that I lead four years now. In fact, we are going to have an election next year, and I have, in fact met a lot of uh, welfare officers at the High Commission. None has been accommodating as my brother, Mr. Alege. We are from the same stage. Oh, wow. Apart from his accommodating, last year, when we did our centenary, the High Commissioner asked him to represent his interest at the centenary. And he behaved impeccably well. All our members that came, Leeds, Liverpool, Bradford, he stood up to greet all of them. They said, is that the Mr. Legge? I said, yes. They said, ah, ah, why, why is it that uh, people are not telling us that we got some people? Go? I said, it's not only him. If you go there, we got Mr. Adeni, Prince Adeni, and all the others that are good. I cannot take much time. If I should go on, I've known him now. And every time there's any problem, I ring him. He would say, okay, we sort it out tomorrow, and everything is done. If you have problem in our branches, I do consult with him. In fact, I've met three welfare officers, and none has existed as he has done. <laughs> when we heard that we are going to have this uh, gathering, we decided to do it, NENC, NNC, because our people wanted to come from the, throughout the country to come and honor him. I had to tell them to step back that the minister has, has told me that he wanted to do it as a joint thing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are familiar with our organization work, have you ever seen me with Kanuk and the needles standing together? No. <laughs> Who made it possible? Mr. This, our only man. <laughs> and we always go and do things together. We are all working for the interest of our country. We are not enemies. We are friends. We are families. And I don't want to say a lot. When you see a man, it's not about the words you speak, the gladdings, the clothing you wear, but 
the important thing, aspect of human being, is when people see you, they hear your name and they are happy. Whenever we hear his name, we are happy. May God continue to be with you and your household. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for being here. Oh, sorry. Um, we have signed the original card. This is another original signed by my people from all our states in the UK, all our region. This is a token card for you, sir. And we'll be there on Friday as well to honor you, sir. God bless you, sir. I'm going to be calling a gentleman who came all the way from Glasgow because of Mr. Elege. Elege. This gentleman, I spoke with him two days ago, and he said he would be coming, and he's here today. He's the chairman of the Nigerian community in Glasgow. Can you please give him a round of applause, please? <laughs> Mr. Smith. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. All protocol being observed. I, I've got much, I've got no much to say about Mr. Lege because all has been said. If I should start saying things now, it's like I'm repeating myself. But on behalf of my community in Scotland, we've got a token to present to Mr. Lege, and uh, we all wish him well in his endeavor. Sir, on behalf of Nigeria Community Scotland, we hereby present you with this award of recognition. Thank you very much. Thank you. She's smiling here. Yeah, she's all right. She's all right. Emiko. Thank you, sir. Oh, from Scotland. From Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sorry? I don't want you to be put on that. The gifts are cards from the Nigeria Scotland. Again? Oh. Wow. Very good. Wow. That's good. That's good. Wow. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you bring my own check? <laughs> now, the next pe person I'm going to be calling is another woman who is a, she's a very strong woman in, the, in our community. Uh, should I say an activi ac activist? <laughs> uh, she's very known everywhere, but the one thing about her, she's always say she says the truth. She's always saying the truth, and she will not let anybody go scot free if you are not doing the right thing. The person is Jenny Okafor. That's a very good word. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm not really sure what more I can add to all the great things they have said about you. But um, Mr. Lege, I want to say to you, if you listen to all of all the speeches and you thought, mm, is this really me that people are talking about? Yes, indeed. It has been about you. You're such a nice man. As a lot of people have said here, in the past, before your team came, we dreaded going to the embassy. And myself, being the sort of woman that I am, I say my mind and, you know, I have no, no qualms about it. I had had a rouse at the embassy and I refused to go. But you guys have made it a home for us. And you have not just made it a home for Nigerians in the UK. You have also made the Nigerian women in diaspora and every Nigerian woman welcome at the embassy. We feel like it's a home. I always have one grievance or another 
I don't know, sometimes <laughs> they're real and they're unreal. But anytime you go there or you call him, he's always that person with the calming influence to say, it's all right, we'll look into it. And if he promises to do something, he will do it. It's not like in the past where people would just, uh, you know, tell you, oh, we are going to do it, and they never did it. You were always there for us. For instance, we've been campaigning for the past uh, one year about bring back our girls. We're always there on the 15th of every month at the embassy. Mr. Alege is always the person who will come down to acknowledge us. And, I mean, that is tremendous. You know, he's, he's, he's a Nigerian and he's a true Nigerian. He believes in being Nigerian and he's not just believing in, in being Nigerian. He's actually showing what it is that, you know, you need to do to be Nigerian. He is a typical example of true Nigerians. And I can only say thank you very much for all the support. The women would, would have loved to host you, you know, on our own, just to show our appreciation. But it's not late. <laughs> it's not late. We'll still do something, you know. But we want to wish you well. And uh, whatever you're going to do in Nigeria, let the next post be the next big uh, thing you're waiting for. And may the Lord bless you as you travel. And also make your children the best of children. All the wishes you have for them, let them come true. May Nigeria be the biggest next thing for you. Amen. Thank you very much. Our minister, Mr. Victor, to say one or two things. <laughs> well, I... First, where do I start? Should I really be talking about Mr. Alega or should we be talking about those who have put this event together tonight? Uh, I'm now having it difficult. I don't know who to talk about. Those who have put this event together with Mr. Alega. But it would appear that uh, everybody is focusing on Mr. Alega. And then uh, I've been commanded by the chairman of Kanuk, and as the High Commissioner will say, you don't disobey the chairman of Kanuk <laughs> unless you want to have a rebellion in your hands. <laughs> well, I have to do this confession without taking permission from my friend and colleague, Mr. Alege, that he was a little bit frightened when this kind of scenario was being arranged for him. And he wondered whether he has to come. And I told him, I think you should come. Because if you don't come, you're going to disappoint so many people. I said, you should come because you deserve it. You work for the Nigerian community, and they have decided to express their gratitude to you. And I would like you to come. And that is why we are all here as his colleague to support him. I really want to thank you, the Nigerian community, for recognizing the qualities you've so mentioned about him. Indeed, indeed, it's always very difficult for somebody to work hard enough to deserve the kind of praises and commendation that Mr. Lege has received today. And I want to thank you. And Mr. Lege, indeed, you've worked hard enough. We all appreciate you. Just like uh, uh, the Prince has said it, we believe that uh, because you've left very grim memories here, good testimonies, as you're going forward back to Nigeria, you bring greater testimonies. And I want to thank you by the words of their mouth, because can I quote the Bible? He says, out of the fullness of their heart, thy mouth speaketh. By what they have said today, it's not only appreciation, but their prayers. And I believe that those prayers and good wishes will carry you through. Yeah. Madam, I want to thank you, because sitting there quietly, and you know the anxious moment that would have felt when he has to work late in the night. And for the kids, when he's not always going to be there, you allow him to go and save the community. You allow him to go and save Nigeria. And I'm happy that today you are proud that people could acknowledge that. Thank you so much for your support. And I continue to pray that you continue to give him that support going forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I think um, 
we will have our excellency okay okay okay, okay that's true if anybody wants anybody wants to say anything anybody before anybody want to say anything nobody nobody from the other side nobody okay Okay. Okay. Now I would. Um, they are saying it already. They are saying it already. <laughs> uh, and I will now ask our His Excellency, our Deputy High Commissioner, to say one or two things on behalf of uh, Mr. Lege. Thank you. One nice thing, one wonderful thing about being the last speaker is that uh, you don't have much to say. <laughs> because uh, all what you perhaps want to say have been uh, said anyway. So one thing is this, I think what uh, the Prince mentioned is that uh, in the diplomatic service you spend your tour and then of course you go back and then you go out again. So for this uh, tour, Mr. Legge has just completed his compass, the compass of the tour, and then of course he's going back. And the thing is that if he doesn't go back, he won't go out again. So I think for him to further his career, it's better for him to go back and also to be in touch with what is happening in Nigeria and to update himself so that he can, be, he can better perform his duties in his next uh, assignment. So that's why. But one good thing is this. One is that I, it's very difficult, like uh, the essay said, one of the most difficult things in the diplomatic service is this uh, consular assignment. Because one, it's not every officer that has the temperament, you know, to be a very good uh, uh, consular officer. Because one, you must have a very good listening here. You must be ready to listen to people. People, Nigerians are in, uh, in the UK, they have problems and they feel they don't have anybody to run to except you. So you cannot afford to add to their problems. Even if you cannot do anything, you have to give them a listening here and of course see what you can do about solving their problems. So what we have seen in him from what that we have all said is the passion. He has that passion uh, for the job and he's very humble. If you are haughty, if you are proud, you cannot be a successful consular officer because you feel that people, Nigerians who have one problem or one issue or the other are troubling you. They are calling you at the middle of the night to say, why is it people, these people call, uh, call, calling me? Or you don't want to even pick their phone, uh, phone calls. So there is no way you can be a successful uh, consular officer if you have uh, uh, those attributes. But I think for Mr. Alege, he has that passion. Uh, he's a great mobilizer. That's what also one thing I've noticed with him. He's an achiever. Any responsibility that is given to him, because he has that passion. He's always a, he's a great uh, uh, achiever. And oftentimes, there was some time somebody invited me to a function. And I'm, I don't know many people, so I consulted him. Okay, do I go attend? Do you know this person? How is the fellow? And, well, he spoke very wonderful things about the fellow. Of course, he could have discouraged that those people, I don't think you should go, you know? Those people are, you know, but I think he spoke. Um, very well of uh, the individual that convinced me that I had to go to uh, 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 the function. So I, I think he has been a very effective uh, consular officer, and that is why we are all here today to to wish him well, and then of course to send him off uh, 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 to to Nigeria. And one thing again about the consular duty is that if you do not have an understanding, why it's always very difficult. Because a woman calls you at nine o'clock, uh, you we promised uh, what of the issue we discussed, and who is that person? Yeah. You know, it's always very difficult. But unless you have a very understanding wife, uh, for you to succeed as a consular officer. <laughs> so whatever success uh, Mr. Alige has today must be one because he has a very understanding wife. Because it's not very easy when a woman calls you very early in the morning or in the midnight when you're about going to bed. And then it's very difficult for you as a man to convince your wife that there is nothing uh, <laughs> on to us. <laughs> yes. Papa said no more woman. And there's no more woman. So it takes the grace of God, really. So I think I want to salute uh, Mrs. Alige for your understanding. And of course, I believe that what we have, because we have stabilized the, the home, that is why he has been very successful in his. Uh, 
a responsibility as a, as, a, as a consular officer. So I wish him well. I have no doubt that uh, he's going to go from, uh, from here to a higher responsibility back at home. And I'm very sure that by his next uh, assignment, it will be on a higher uh, uh, responsibility, I'm sure, higher than the one uh, he has just uh, uh, completed here. Uh, incidentally, he will be leaving shortly, but also we have with we, we us here, the fellow will be replacing him. Let's uh, let them... Uh, Sorry, what's the name? Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Engon. Okay. Emmanuel Engon. He's not a neighbor man. <laughs> so I I no it's just fun it's just fun it's just fun you know <laughs> <laughs> so, may, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Engom had, uh, I, I think, uh, understudied him for about six months now. I think he came uh, yes. December. Yeah, about that. So, I think you are going, the Nigerians here, they, they will miss uh, uh, Mr. Ligg as a person. But in terms of uh, his responsibility, I think you are in safe hands. Uh, he has been able to understudy him, and I'm sure he has also been able to yeah. contact some of the uh, uh, the people that he, he has been able to meet, reach, or uh, network with. So I don't think in terms of uh, having an effective consular service, Nigeria and the uh, UK will have a, a problem uh, as such. So he's also an effective leader, he's calm, and he's uh, very cool and calculated. So I don't think you have any any problem. Having said that, I wish you well. I have no doubt that uh, you are a flyer and that you still have that the sky definitely is your limit uh, in the service so that you move from here to a higher pedestal. And I wish uh, your children very well too because uh, the Bible tells us they are like olive trees. You know, around our table we see them and of course we are happy. So I'm sure that the Lord will be with you even though if your daddy is not around Almighty God will be with you. And uh, Madam, I also th thank you also. So I'm sure you will continue to take good care of him in Nigeria. <laughs> so I think you continue to be a pillar of the house, just like you have uh, you have been to him in the UK. So having said that, let me also thank uh, the organisers. Uh, that has been very thoughtful of you to uh, package this uh, send off and to bring it together. Definitely, you must have spent some money, quite a lot of money, to to feed us and to for us to have this wonderful evening. I say thank you for all the organisers. Uh, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again once again. And uh, I, I wish you best of luck, even as you go back to Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you, His Excellency. Thank you so much. Um, I will thank everybody. Uh, I would really miss Minister Alege, to be honest. It's not my... I'm not going to say much. I'm not going to say much. I'm just telling you I'm going to miss him. I'm very emotional. I don't want to cry. Oh, I'm serious. I love him so much. He's like a brother. He's like a friend. He's a father. He's everything to me. You don't know how many times I, I call. In fact, anytime I'm talking, he's looking at me. Today, don't do that. Don't do that. Ah, he, he, the way he talks to me, you would think he was. He's my father. He's a good man. A very kind man. And um, sir, as you're going. God will be with you. Amen. Whatever you want in life, God will give it to you. Amen. And on behalf of Nigerians in the UK, we because you see, when I was I asked so many people what to buy for the gentleman, I I was just thinking about even it's not about money. Because you see, if I'd given him one million pounds, he will finish in one day. But I said, what can I buy? What can I give on behalf of Nigerians in the UK? And um, I thought of something that this gentleman will want to be seeing what we're doing here when he's in Abuja. Because he's, a kind, he's somebody that he, he thinks about us every time. And I got him a small... At least put it in your room. <laughs> so that you can be seeing us. 
Yes. got him this. So it's only it's only it's only Ben and um, uh, on Channel Twenty Four now. He's in London now. That he'll be watching. Yeah, that is more. <laughs> uh, he hasn't finished. Yeah, he's watching that, my <laughs> And um, the the other thing, on behalf of um, Nigerians in diaspora, this I'm not going to say anything. When you open it, you will love it. It's something that you love so much. Because you have asked me so many, you have asked me so many times. That day, where did you get that thing? Where did you get that thing? And today is the day that you take it to Nigeria. But don't, don't touch it. You just be looking at it. So that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> and um, uh, and uh, and the card that um, we all have signed. I want to present it to. Everybody has actually um, signed this card. Sorry, and um, please, you will see everybody have they've written something in, in there, what they think about you. Please, congratulations. This is from Emmanuel and David. Emmanuel and David. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> this is from oh. uh, the photographer. The photographer. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, Miss Halega, do you want to say anything? Oh, no, no, yes. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> what can I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Jehovah Charlie, I give you all the glory, I give you all the honor, I give you all the adorations. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This is your man. Sir, you. You pardon me. Sir, see if I am overwhelmed, and indeed I am, and uh, highly emotional tonight. But where do I start from? I have to start from appreciating my high commissioner. Dr. Dalatu Seruki Tavida, FRCFR, who has given me all the privileges and assurances. Jennifer, am I right? <laughs> I said, why? I said, I'm longing to know you. I said, why? Why is everybody talking about you? What makes you tick? I said, well, you look, look at me. I'm just an ordinary human being. You are doing a ordinary thing in the High Commission, I corrected you, I said, no. I'm doing the very ordinary thing at the High Commission. And as Ima will always say, that the highest responsibility of any mission at all, whether you call it UK, you call it US, you call it Nigeria, of course, the value is on serving their own community and each and every single individual community is as important as others and of course naturally those with troubles don't come to their commission just like my boss said here that can you please everybody yeah it's a wretched man with that money but there's something valuable i will share with Rosny here that the greatest thing that anybody can give you is his time if you give a man one minute of your life, he's gone and gone forever. If you give a man 100 pounds now, the next 24 hours you can change your mind and say, give him 100 pounds back. <laughs> but the one minute you have given to somebody has gone forever and ever. And I appreciate you for cherishing that in me. 
I'm just like you. As I've always told people when they come to my table the first time, I tell you that just like during the Timka time, somebody said, You are lucky because I've been the other way around. And I've always seen myself as being lucky because the people I'm serving will have been the same people that are supposed to serve me. How do I want them to serve me? I'm sorry, I'm not religious, and my wife knows that. Has been trying to push me. <laughs> but my pastor, Pastor Aguruku, used to say one thing that is very, very fundamental to me. It's not how you say you are welcome, but how the other person feels welcome in your home that matters most. And if that is the legacy I'm even behind, I'm happy it was it. Doctor, I really appreciate you. For all of you that put this night together, I'm emotional. And if I have to start talking from now to the kingdom come, I can't appreciate you when I know. My brother, Mr. Smith from Glasgow, you gladden my heart. When, I mean, when she first muttered the idea to me, she told me that they are organizing 150 people. I said, if you organize, don't expect me to be there. <laughs> because I will have 150 people. Then I caught her down. I mean, OK. She reported me to my boss. <laughs> Tunde here. Tunde said that, no, sir, you just have to accommodate some people. I said, okay, if you're going to be a very small gathering where I can look at everybody's face, then I'm ready. But we are just like my twin brother here, though we are not from the same biological parents, and we happen to be brothers. My son, Tolapo, here, <laughs> and my daughter, of course, Damilola, here. He's joining me to go and start uh, law school in Nigeria with his senior sister. And this one is continuing a uh, pharmacy course here in the UK. So she's coming back to UK. Uh, and of course, their friend, who has more or less become a family uh, daughter. <laughs> eh? I appreciate you all for tonight, sir. No doubt from my mind, this one will continue to be an indelible man. Because you remind me of when we are departing Stockholm. And interestingly, by the time I came here, the first week I arrived in London, I didn't know nobody. But before I called Jack Robinson, somebody in their commission, Sir Veronica, just brought phone to me one day, saying, just about three days I arrived, that somebody wants to talk to me. I said, who is this somebody? I didn't know anybody here. Then the next thing I heard was, accidentally, her namesake, Rose, Rose those just, it was like a coup, five of them from Stockholm. Then when he shouted, is that me? I said, it's me, is that you? Said, then all of them started singing behind the phone, I could hear them. And it touched my heart that I, we left Stockholm 1998, how many years back now? And I still think that some people over there could remember me. And of course, when I was living in the same sentiment was expressed even by the present Prime Minister of Sao Tome, who happened to be a very good friend of mine. I appreciate you all. And I thank you all. <laughs> May our roads continue to be according to God's wishes. Seriously, thank you so much, my dear, for putting this one across to me. Doctor, thank you very much, sir. And of course, <laughs> President, my chairman, and my second president, my chairman. Because I have to be president. <laughs> and of course, because when she said, I don't, she doesn't control me, I don't control her. So we can always say, uh, no, no, no. I thank you also. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. Please, we're going to take pictures later on, but before we go, um, we want um, Baba to give us um, prayer.
Yes. 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 We are praying to God Almighty. Please let us pray. In the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, we beseech you, Lord, to be with us. You've guided us up to now at this function. We thank thee for giving us the opportunity to embrace, praise, and encourage our brother, Mr. Alega and his wife and family who are transcending to Nigeria for higher places. We pray, Leo Lord, to continue to guide him, be with him, give him strength and courage to deal with all the problems and obstacles and challenges that may come across his way. And as, as we are departing to go to our respective places of abode, we pray Lee to be with us and guide us and keep us safe in your arms so that we can continue to praise thee continuously. For we ask all these in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you. you can, yes, you can be seated. There are pictures. Pictures. Pictures, pictures with it. Maybe over there. Let's just do it at the entrance. The pictures.